theyeshiva.net. Yeah. Okay. We'll actually do something. We finished the Seitzah. We'll do something actually on Matos. On Parshish Matos. Page 168. 168, the last column. Maybe for some people it will be a Chazara, because I once taught it, but Nishke Ferlech. One sixty eight by midbar, remember by midbar, you remember the numbers start all over again. Huh? Yeah, this week's parish is Matas. Friday Matas. You see Vishama Via Snidra. Vishama Via Snidra, the beginning of Parshas Matas is a daughter. We're not talking about a daughter who's an adult, a bigeris, a younger daughter. The Allah is, the Chumr says, if she makes a nether, and when you make a nether, you have to fulfill the nether. But the father hears about the nether and he annuls it. So then she's good to go, even if she didn't annul her nether. She ta- makes a nether, she's never going to eat cheesecake. Ever. Right? The next week there's a beautiful bar mitzvah, great bris, there's unbelievable cheesecake. And she wants to eat the cheesecake. Her father says, don't worry, my tired. Uh, I heard you make the nether. And I said, so to say that whenever he hears about it, he could be mevatel the nether, and it's fine. She doesn't have to do anything. Of course, there's a concept called hataras nadarim. Anybody could do hataras nadarim, right? You go to a bezdin, or you go even to one expert, or you go to three, and they could do hataras nadarim. They could annul almost, not almost, not every, but almost any nether you make when they consider the circumstances. That's the halach. Risham avias he goes off to another Indian, he's going to come back. Lohavin Indian, the Gduke Seifrim. To understand the whole concept of the Gduke Seifrim. The Gduke Seifrim literally means the meticulous instructions of the sages and the rabbis. Shanaroyim Kemat. We see Kemat Shekola Talmud. Almost the entire Gemara, the entire body of Talmud, of Gashas, Bavli, Yerushalmi. Mole is filled. Me'alachas v'chumras she'ichmiru chachamena z'chernam levrach. It's filled with halachas and stringencies. That the Chazal instituted Vaisifu Kamakdarim Musagam Tayashabiksaf. They added many fences and many parameters around Tayashabiksaf. Any sugi in Gemara that you're learning, any sugi you're learning, right? We learned today in the Sechta Beitza, Amir Lanachri Shvus. A Malacha I'm not allowed to do myself on Shabbos. I don't tell a guy to do for me on Shabbos. Minatoyra, it's not a problem. Chacham. It's a major issue in Hilch Shabbos. Major Asian and it's a whole new definition, it's a whole new fence around the Shabbos. Well, take all the halachas of Muktza. And the same is true so many other areas, right? We don't eat chicken and milk. You're allowed to eat chicken and milk, you're allowed to cook chicken and milk, it's not possible. Chal of chicken is not bosa. Reisi Agli, the Gemara says, used to do it. I was giving one example, but there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands. The whole Gemara, any sugya and Gemara, is about this concept. We learned today Yom Tov Shainishal Golis. We're celebrating a second day of Yom Tov. Right? This is what the rabbis added. We don't have to make a second day of Yom Tif. We know when Yom Tif is. We have a calendar. They said, So the whole t- body of Talmud, the whole body of Yiddishkeit is filled with gedarim, extra fences and chumras that the Chachamim made. In terms of mitzvahs, whether washing your hands before bread, or saying halal and rishchidosh, or saying brachas, or davening three times a day, shachas men chamaidiv, or making blessings before you eat, etc., etc., or or uh, takonis, institutions, or gzedas, decrees, don't do this, because it's similar to this, so you may come to do this. The question is, if this is what God wants, so why didn't he say it? Why didn't he say it? Good question, yeah? The pshat is, the chazal tell us, it says in Shir Hashirim, the beginning of Shir Hashirim, Yishakeni min hashikas piyu, Kiss me with a kiss of your mouth. Because your love is better than wine. It's than wine. 
Zog the Gemara Amra Knesset Yisro. The Jewish people said, "I rave him a lie." Divrei Soif from Yosef Miyena Shal Torah. Doidecha refers to Divrei Soif. The words of the sages are more sweet to me, Miyayin, than the wine of Torah. What does it mean? Divrei Soifrim are sweeter than the wine of Torah. <coughs> Peter, it means as follows. Yena shal Torah, pnimi yisat Torah v'saydeisa. They don't say Torah. Wine of Torah represents the internal core of Torah. The soydus of Torah, the depth of Torah, the secrets of Torah. The Gemara says in Meseches Erevin, when wine comes in, secrets come out. We all know people get inebriated or intoxicated by wine and they say things that usually they would not say. The secrets come out. Some people drink just to be able to speak openly. Some people drink for other reasons. The Gemara says Yayin is the Gematri of 70. Yud Yud Nun is 70. Soid is also Samach Vav Dalad is 66 and 470. Because wine and secrets have a common denominator. And the reason for this is also Pashat and Gashmias. Wine is a secret. It's concealed in the grape. You have to crush the grape and get the wine out. It's not on the surface. So when we say Yeno Shal Toida, we're referring to not just Toida on the surface. We're referring to the wine of Toida, the depth of Toida, the Yayin, the core of Toida, the Soidus of Toida, that which is beneath the surface of Toida. Nonetheless, Divre Soifrim Arevim Al Knasis Yisrael Yosem Esoidus Toida. More than the wine of Toida is the sweetness of Divre Soifrim, of the words of the rabbis of the sages. Why? Kikol Hagdarim Vachom Lashem Divre Rabbi Seinu Zechernim Levrach. Because all of the Gdarim, all of the fences and the stringencies that the Chazal introduced into Yiddishkeit. V'darkei Musr and the ways of ethics. Sheba Agadis or Perkei which fi- are found in all the Agadis of Shas. Of course in Shas you have Halacha and you have Agadah. Halacha deals with the Gzairis and the Chumris and the Takanas and the Minhagim and the Shvusim and so forth. But then you have all the Agadis, all the Medrashim like Perkei which teaches various ideas of ethics. All of this, Kulam Nimshachim Ebchines Averab. All of them come from Averab, which means from an intense, excessive love. Because my of the Pesach says, Ahafti eschem Amar Hashem. The Navi Malachi, and it's important who said it. The Navi Malachi was from the last Nevi'im in Jewish history. This is the beginning of Bayesheni, which is the era of most Isuri de Rabbanon, Bayesheni as we'll see. So in the beginning of that Bayesheni, Malachi says, I want you to know something. Ahafti eschem Amar Hashem. I love you. And all the Chumras come from this Av. What's Pshat? Kamoy la Marshal, Marshal, take a metaphor. Adam, a human being, Machmas Avase al Bnoi, because he loves his child. Medaktik ima yoiser. So he's more meticulous, he's more cautious to nuance. La Hoysif alav Shmir Mu'ula. He guards him much more than he would guard anybody else. Big Syagim Ugdarim, making Syagim parameters or fences, Ugdarim and boundaries. Bechalev Shari Bal Karchar Shayyim and Nukamikal Vakal. Because he wants him to be completely clean. Because he wants him to be toxic free. Because he wants him to be cleansed. If he doesn't care so much about a child, you want to eat this, eat this. Cotton candy, cotton candy. You already had 29 lollipops. One more. You already finished three ice creams. Why not? One more. It looks good. You had one piece of cake. Take another piece of cake. Bashas, he wants his son to be completely healthy, cleansed, manuka. He should be cleansed. He shouldn't have any toxicity in him. So he's more cautious, he's more sensitive, and he wants him to stay away from it. And he has a deep desire that he should be able to develop a life in which he finds grace, and in which he develops his life, his, his mind, like we say in 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 says more. When you have a gem, when you have a, a margolius, a, a diamond, the more precious it is, you guard it more. Shmira Mu'ula, better Shmir Kli Kli. In the expression of Chazal, you'll put it one vessel within another vessel, sometimes within another vessel. In other words, you guard it much more. Why are you guarding it so much? You're guarding it so much because it's so precious to you. It's so powerful to you. You do not want it to get lost. You do not want it to get tarnished. You do not want it to get ruined. You don't want it to get dirty. Why? Why? So paradoxically, the shmira, the fact that you say, no, stay away from this, stay away from this, is why? 
because I'm so sensitive, because I want to know you should be opti- you should operate on your most optimal, optimal level. And because I want you to operate on your most optimal level and to be as healthy and as powerful and as robust and as have as much as energy and enthusiasm and alacrity as much as possible, therefore I am very sensitive to the details of what goes into your system, what doesn't go into your system, what you eat, what you don't eat, what you do, what you don't do, all mitzad the Ava Rab. Because of the tremendous love of Hashem to us, Therefore, you have the various stringencies in the Kedukim. Meticulous details of this, you do this, you don't do. Which are the words of They all come from excessive, tremendous love with various parameters and boundaries to refine us for our goodness that we should be able to be completely cleansed, completely sacred, completely wholesome, completely nucky, completely pure. That's the definition of all the G'darim and all the S'yagim. In other words, any Blat Gemara that you learn, any Mishnah you learn, any Sif and Shulchan Aruch that you learn, you have to be able to see in it a flow of endless love. If I'm not seeing within it love, then I'm not seeing it. That's kitoivim daidecha miyoyin. Divrei soifrim has something even more than yeinu shal Torah. Because yeinu shal Torah, even the depth of Torah that Hashem gave, is also an expression of love. But the divrei soifrim, they were so sensitive. Gzeda this, gzeda that. Atu this, atu that. We're worried about this, you shouldn't come to this. This is similar to this, similar to that. It's like, what's going on? They were so sensitive because the Ava, the tremendous Ava Rabba to Neshamas Yisra. We all understand that if somebody has a, a nuclear reactor in their backyard, hopefully not, you put a fence around it. <laughs> you put a fence around it. But I don't have to say a nuclear reactor. You have something that can uh, give an electric shock or cause other damage. So you put a fence around it why you don't want you or your wife or your child or a guest to touch it so just say don't touch it the answer is you don't want them to get even close to it but for this there's one condition you have to realize what the danger is if you don't realize what the danger is who cares if somebody touches it when we look at a lot of the xeris of the chazal we're not sensitive to the nuclear danger that exists in the isr so therefore it's like relax (laughs) So they'll come to do the Isser. What's the worst thing that can happen? But understand, if somebody understands the Chumras are Isser, and they realize how damaging it can be spiritually or emotionally or physically and so, or morally and so forth, so then you would look at the fence not as a, as a fence to, to, to make your life harder. It's rather a fence because they're sensitive that you shouldn't get hurt. And if there's another fence, it's only because there's extra sensitivity and caution. So if I'm not, if I don't realize the toxicity in this food or the poison in this behavior, okay, big deal. What do you want from me? Just chill out and relax. But if you are sensitive to it, if you are aware of it, as the Chazal were to Torah, so then your paradigm changes, your perspective changes. You know your child is allergic to milchiks or allergic to peanuts or allergic to sugar. Just go ahead because he's crying without it. That's not called love. That's called apathy, it's called coldness, it may even be called cruelty. And the contrary, you want somebody should operate on their most optimal level, that is essentially what is behind all of the takanas and all of the chumras, you have to be able to look at it and see a flow of ahava rabba, a flow of ahava rabba to be able to operate on the maximum level on, on, in everything, spiritually, physically, emotionally. If so, we have a big question. So Torah should have been given with all the Chumras and all the Takanas. If it's so important that you want your child to operate on the highest level and therefore you want them to be cleansed and you want to guard the, 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 the diamond that it shouldn't be tainted and tarnished in any way. So it should have always been there. Why are they Takanas of the Chazam? It was sufficient with the mitzvahs of Torah. <coughs> Remember that Yiddishkeit during Bayes Rishon looked somewhat different than Yiddishkeit looks today. Because you didn't have, for example, the Shul. You didn't have Shachus Ben Chemaidev. 
you had the basic stuff. I mean, you had Tumah and Tara, that was a big thing that we don't even have today. Of course, you had the mitzvah of Tefillin, you had the mitzvah of Shabbos, you had the Malachas of Shabbos. But you didn't have most of Suri You had some Muktza actually came from the time of David and Shloyme and some other stuff that came then. But a lot of the things we do and we don't do, and a lot of the things we're careful, right? If you talk about a blech to somebody in Bayes Rishon, he doesn't know what you're talking about. Even though today it's a major <laughs> element of, 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 of Jewish life. I'm saying a lot of the Takonas and the Chum is much older than him of Muktza. Right, so some taka were early, but many late, and it's, it's, even all the brachas we make, you eat an apple, you make a bracha, you make a boyd of priyets, a shahakal, brachas, a shachar, all these things, it's all takhanas and all from Anshe Knesset from Bayesheni. So he says, in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, especially the first one, it was enough with Dari Daisim and Atayra. Ki hoisa ne monas Hashem ruchenu, because our spirit was loyal to God. Voloi mashchenu chevle avoises avaseinu letaivis gashmias. We were not pulled with thick ropes of love to material addictions and cravings. It was easier for a person to experience love to Hashem, entrenched in his heart, to be passionate about Avodah Hashem and Teira, even without feeling and experiencing the tremendous love generation after generation. to as the hearts became diminished. The wholesome hearts in Avodas Hashem got diminished. In the sense of not having that intense love like a glowing fire. We became scorched with an alien fire. Ba'avas Vitaivas Gufniyas with love and cravings and inclinations and addictions that deal with the material, the kol kach gavru aleinu, and they're so powerful. We almost cannot, we don't even know what it means to serve God with love, we just don't even understand what it means, like what does it mean to have real avas Hashem? We know what it means to have cravings and inclinations and addictions and all that, but an avat Hashem, we just don't have that sensitivity. And by the way, this is the reason why in Bayis Rishon, the biggest Nisayim was Avoid Zara, which today we don't even understand what this Taivet Avoid Zara. So it's brought, it's explained because Klippa is always a competitive to Kedush. It's always Zelo Umaza. In this Man Habayis, Judaism was not so much an experience of institutionalized religion. It was more of a spiritual experience of intimacy with Hashem. And Avoid Zara offered a spiritual high without the humility and the discipline that halacha demands, that Yiddish guy demands. So Avodah Zara was so attractive because it was an ability to get high, high on life, like today we have some stuff, right? It was the psychedelic experience of the time to be able to challenge what Kedusha had to offer, and that is intimacy with God. In Bayez Sheni, where that changed in Kedusha, it also changed in Klippa. The Zara didn't become very attractive. In fact, Yiddishkeit assumed much more of an institutionalized, uh, institutionalized reality. To the point that you could go through all the motions, you don't even know what Avas Hashem meant, means. A person doesn't even know what it means to have a relationship with God, to have intimacy with God, to have an experience with God. In fact, it's even strange language. So it's a whole different situation. So he says when that happened, what happens is, we can't experience this love if we don't feel his love to us. If we don't have the his oiridus, if we will not be aroused from the, his love to us. Where did his love come out in Bayesheni? Through all the chumras, through all the dikduke soifrim, through the whole Mishnayis and Gemara, all the halachas and all the details of halacha, this was, so to speak, Hashem's way of saying, I love you in the most infinite, infinite, infinite way possible. So basically the whole Gemara, you know, people wonder why we learn Gemara so much, right? So now you understand, the reason we learn Gemara is we're trying to basically share with our children, especially our boys who need it, for 7, 8, 9, 12 hours a day, how much we love them. Is that what the Bachram are hearing in the Gemara? Huh? Well, that's what they should be hearing. In other words, how much, how deep the love is, how deep the Averab is. Ayidei, Bektukei Sefer Chumrein, Bechol Protein, Hein Bebchin Esur Meira, 
both in terms of going away from Rabbi Chol HaChumr Shebegemara Paiskim, all the stringencies in Gemara and of course all the Paiskim, because remember, besides Gemara, suddenly when you get to the world of Shulchan Aruch, you have a whole new set of Chumras, right? You have this tradition said this, the Sacharin said this, there's a Chumra here, a Chumra there, that's why he adds Paiskim. The same is true in the positive. All the directives of Musr, of ethics, in Agada and Pirkei for example, Ayin Toiva, to develop a good eye. To see your friend with a good eye. Don't contemplate in your heart evil about your friend, that he's bad. You know, what we call judging people. V'chein leiv toiv, a good heart. Chavr toiv, a good friend. He's just giving an example of a brikei yavis. So this is all to arouse in the person the sense of the deep love that the Reboi Shaloilam has to every single Jew, which as a result of that, as a result of that ava, now he could reciprocate. When you can feel and experience how much somebody loves you, and loves you uninhibitedly, and loves you with Ava Rabbah, this helps us in the later generations to be able to experience Ava Sashem. So that's why in earlier parts of Jewish history, it was enough with the mitzvahs of Torah, Torah And then later, when <coughs> the ropes of love are schlepping us, we gravitate towards gluttony or addiction and materialism. So now came out all of the takonas, divrei seifrim, to be able to experience far more this love to Knesset Yisrael because that's basically beyond what is behind all of the halacha. That tremendous av. After the parentheses, you see so parentheses with footnotes, references. This is the meaning of the Pasuk. Very heavy now. We learned in the beginning of Matois. A daughter makes a nether. The father hears about it. The heini avia oisa. Heini avia means he, uh, heini. Anybody learned the chumash this week? <laughs> you know what ki heini avia oisa means? Huh? He removes it, yeah. Ki heini avia oisa, he removes the nether. He disclaims the nether. He says, what's the meaning of this? Ha'av meifedes haneder, the father annuls, undoes the promise. Ki mepchines averabe, from the tremendous love that a father has to a daughter, who meifer kitargumoi mevatel. The targum says, "What's meifer? Hefer mevatel. He nullifies. What does he nullify? Neder. What's a neder? Kol ha isurim, all the, all the isurim, all the." No, no, no. Isurim vikishurim. All the knots. All the knots. Vikishurim. Entanglements. Very good. Asher Knesses Yisrael. He asuru kshura. With which Knesses Yisrael, the community of Jewish souls, is bound up with. He annuls all those knots and entanglements. Ve'ein chavush matir atzmoy. And a prisoner cannot extricate himself from prison. The Gemara says, If I'm in chains, if I'm handcuffed, I can't remove it myself. I need you. Kiyim, the only way he can get out of prison is they mid us Only through tremendous Ava, which is Pchina Savir. That's what a father represents. Av comes from the word Ava, Ava, love, of. The word like Ava, Hashem Alekecha. Avisa Tehila, desire, love. Alevez, Vahaftas Hashem Alekecha. That's Av. Definition of a father is love. So Vishama Avi is not only the tremendous love of the Father. This has the ability to remove the entanglement and the knots of Knesset Yisrael. You type what he says? You see, you could gloss over these two lines, as many people do and have done, and probably will do. And okay, fine. Av, Neder, Isr, Kishr, why? We're tied up, so you have Ava, you may fit it. Here's a classic example. You have two lines here. Maybe address is one of the greatest issues of our generation. What's a neder? A promise. What's it literally in halacha? I make a promise, a vow, a pledge. I'm not going to do this and this. That's what it is technically. But what's the concept of a neder? A neder is basically, when I make a neder, I'm now bound. I can't say, oh, forget it. There's an iser. Iser from the word asr. 
Beis HaAsurim, a prison. When you say something is forbidden, why is it called Isser? Because I cannot touch it. So to speak, my hands are tied. Because that's Asr. Mutter is untied. Right? Mutter. We have in Hilcha Shabbos, Lahatir HaKesher, to untie a knot. Mutter means my hands are not tied. That's Pashat technically, practically, halachically. But go a step deeper. He touches a what's a nether. People are often knotted. They're in shackles. They're in a prison. They're asur. They have isurim vikishurim that they, not, I made a promise I can't do it. A nether represents a certain paradigm. I'm in a position where I feel stuck. I feel lacked. I feel paralyzed. I can't. My hands, my feet, my soul, my heart, my creativity, my happiness, my optimism, my confidence is tied up. It's tied up. That's the Pshat Neder. Knesset Yisrael is sometimes tied up or individual is entangled in something and I can't get out of it. Maybe trauma, maybe insecurity, maybe jealousy, or whatever it is. Every person has the knots that you know what is holding you down. It's literally you're knotted. Your hands, your feet, your mind, your heart, your soul, your potentials, your creativity, your koiches. What, what's the cause of the knot? Whatever the cause of the knot is, kol chad, everyone has their pekala, their maisala. So a person is in prison. How do you take somebody out of prison? Do you tell them, go out? Won't help. Ein chav Do you tell them, why are you in prison? <laughs> they know they're in prison. Come out of prison. Won't help. So what do you have to do? Unlock. Huh? Unlock. Unlock. So he says, nidra. When the father representing absolute love hears the nether of his daughter, in other words, he becomes sensitive to what she's entangled in. Kiheni avia oisa. Because there's a father. A father represents midas ave rabba. What that does is it automatically breaks off the nether. What does this mean in a person's life? What it means in a person's life is, I think what the Balatanya is teaching us is as follows. You have a per- let's take a child. You have a child. A child is in a nether. What do we mean here by a nether? A nether means, metaphorically, they're stuck. They're tied up. They're usur. They're kosher. They're stuck. I could come over to them and I could say, come on! Come on! Let's go! Snap out of it! Come out! The problem is, <laughs> he can't. He can't. He's trying, he can't. Or sometimes, you start explaining to him how bad his situation is. Don't you realize what you're doing? He knows. He's in prison. So some of us are screaming, don't you realize what you're doing? He knows what he's doing, he just can't get out. Some of us, we don't tell him, oh, don't you really do it? But come out, come on, develop a desire. He wants to, can't. So what do you do? What do you do? So we scream a little harder. <laughs> we scream a little harder. Come on, eh! You wake up 3 o'clock in the afternoon. No normal person wakes up 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Get your life together. Be productive. Be like your older brother. Look at your older brother. Look at your sister. Get your life together. Right? That's what we do. And, and we mean well. We're trying to guide him. We're trying to guide him. This is what you got to do. Get out of your prison. So either I want to inspire a desire. Do you realize you're in a mess? Come out. Or, maybe I think you have a desire, but I just tell you, this is not good. Come here. The problem in these situations is that often, the person is trapped. He can't. He would love to, but he can't. He knows that he's in prison. If he doesn't know he's in prison, then you're in a good place. (laughs) Tell him. Right? If he doesn't know how what to do, tell him. He knows he's in prison, and he even knows what to do, but he can't do it. He knows what would be the right thing, the right way to live, but he can't. There's one Eitzah. What's the Eitzah? Averab. Averab means you have to find within yourself the Tata. You have to become a father. Father means Midas Averab. To love the person with tremendous Ava. How does that help? How does that help? Posh it. Maybe not so posh it. What Averab does is it makes the person feel their dignity, their value, their power. How is this person loving me? 
I'm a hopeless, despaired loser. How are you loving me? The fact that you love me so much tells me, consciously or unconsciously, that I have dignity, that I'm a mitzvah, that I have significance, that I have shivas. You know what happens then? You allow the person to experience that they are more po- to experience themselves and realize that they are more powerful than their trauma. They are more powerful than their shackles. They are more powerful than their addictions. They're more powerful than their fears. They're more powerful than their typhus. I have chains. I have addictions. I have trauma. This person may have been abused or even molested. Right? And it's a fact. It's there. You can't take it away. It's there. You can't say, get out. He's traumatized. This kid is traumatized. Get out of trauma. He can't. The only thing I can do is one thing. I can try to help him reach a place where he should be able to look at himself and say, I am more powerful than my trauma. I am more powerful than the abuse. I am more powerful than the chains are there, but I'm more powerful. I'm more powerful than my fears. How, how can I help a person do that? By telling them to get out, they're traumatized. By telling them what to do, they know better than you what to do. What's the right thing, what's the wrong thing. What I need to do is I need to build them up. They're broken. And a broken prisoner can't get out of chains. They can't go through a wall, they can't break down the door. I have to give him power. How do I give him power? The Midas Averabe, what it does is, when I love you, Be'emes, genuinely, I lift you up. You feel, hey, I'm loved. I'm not damaged goods. There's something worthy of love here. There's something worthy of love. There's something special here. You allow the person to find in themselves their goodness, their power, their confidence, their, uh, their hope their sense of belonging, their sense of connection to Hashem, and then they already know what to do. <laughs> they want to go out of prison more than you want them to go out of prison. They want to go out of prison. And they know it's a prison. You think they wa- a person likes to wake up every day 5 o'clock in the afternoon? Okay, some of us would love to do it, I know. But you think every pro- regular person loves that? Sometimes the person is more bothered than anybody else but he's paralyzed. He's in a state of paralysis. So you have to be very, very sensitive. People often are completely not toifes de nekuda. They're making believe that the person is choosing to be in a prison or he doesn't realize it's a prison. He knows what's right and what's wrong. He knows he's a prison. He wants to get out of it. The problem is he's broken. He's broken. That's what a nether is on this level, on this interpretation. What you need is you need to make him whole. You make him whole, he can get out. Okay, we started on Friday. Uh, Matos, so we'll finish it today. Uh, page 169, Parshas Matos. Page 169. As I told you, the numbers repeat themselves every Chomer, so make sure you're in Bamidbar 169. Parshas Matos, Pei He, column one, closer to the bottom. Closer to the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we also did, yeah, we did the first day of the Friday. So there was two Yesodas, there's two fundamental ideas that, uh, that the Balatanya establishes here. Number one is the first half of the Mimer, and number two is the end of the Mimer. Number one is to understand why suddenly in Bayez Sheni there became an explosion of Xerius and Chumras. Almost on every single mitzvah, the rabbis and the sages added a new stringency, a new fence, a new parameter. And anybody who learns Mishnayas and Gemara, as he says, the Kol HaTalmud, the entire Talmud, is filled with this. Right? Any sugi, I mean, we're learning now in the morning uh, before this, we learn Masech So constantly, constantly, you're not let to sweep your dining room on Yom Tif after the meal when there's earth. Why? Because you're going to come to fill up a hole with earth, and that would be a concept of boina, of building. Right? I'm just giving one example. Any sugi you're dealing with, you have this, you have this constantly. Things that biblically are not forbidden. <laughs> biblically, they're not forbidden. 
but they are rabbinically forbidden, either in the negative, things that they said you're not allowed to do, or things they said you have to do, vasei taif. And this didn't happen in the beginning of Jewish history. For a long time, this didn't exist. Most of the Xeris of Chazal come out during the second Beis HaMikdash, towards later points of the second. You have earlier also, you have the Anshei Knesset Sagdai Lamesak and all the Brachas and all the Tfilis, which are, of course, a major institution in Jewish life. You have the concept of the shul that comes later in Judaism, the very concept of the Mikdash Ma'at. This is introduced by Yecheskel Hanavi after the Churban by Yisrishim, the concept of the Mikdash Ma'at, the mobile Beis HaMikdash. And then you have most of the Xeris and Takonis you have during by Yesheni, by the Zugas, by the Tanoim, and this would continue after Churban by Yesheni. Of course, it would continue in the time of the Gemara, which is the Amirayim. It would continue with the Rabbanon Sfuroi, the Ga'inim, the Rishainim, and the Acharayim, etc. Huh? <laughs> well, if you know Jewish culture, it never stops. It never stops. Some people actually get very excited on every new Chumrah. If they could do a new Chumrah, they embrace it. But you can't compare the two. And I'll explain to you what I mean. There was a time when the Gzeira of Chazal became universally obligatory on all of Klal Yisrael. That doesn't exist anymore. All that can happen afterwards, at some, once the Sanhedrin was sealed, once the Sanhedrin was was dissolved, and the Gemara was sealed, no Bezdin in the world could make a Takana that could uh, obligate, can oblige all of the Jewish people. Even the Rishonim, who asked Kitni is on Pesach, right? Rice on Pesach, the legumes on Pesach. It can only, it can only uh, um, uh, be imposed on the Ashkenazi communities, the communities in Germany, the communities in France, not the communities in Spain and Portugal, or North Africa, or the East, you know, Iraq, Iran, because now it was up to each Bezdin in its location, in its locale. The ability of Sanhedrin, who were the spiritual authority, the Supreme Court, so to speak, in charge on the constitution of Judaism, Musmach, Ish Mipi Ish, literally, till Moshe Rabbeinu, generation after generation, 71 giants in each generation, that was dissolved at some point, approximately in the 400s, uh, 500s when the Talmud Bavli was sealed during this uh, sim- a little before that after Abayi and Rav and therefore you don't have that level of authority anymore. Yeah, Ba'asr de Rav no Karav Ba'asr de Shmuel no Kishmuel there but they didn't Asay Lecharav etc. You understand? So it's a big difference. But the question is what happened? In other words if this is what Hashem wants this is what Hashem wants if not what's this idea of all these all these Gzairis and Takanas? So the main, main point he made here was that, and this is counterintuitive, because usually most people see the intricacies of halacha as not uh, very much uh, going on the same line like inspiration or spirituality or ecstasy. There's two different experiences in Judaism. One is the nuanced diktuk in halacha, which really speaks to a very cerebral part of a person, and you get into the details and to every nekud, every machloikas, and the psagdin, and this svara, and that svara. So that speaks, so to speak, to one part of the brain. And then there is, you know, spirituality, emotion, ecstasy, dveikas, intimacy, which, so to speak, addresses a different region of the brain. And I mean, even in simple, uh, not simple, but even in neuroscience, it, it really addresses different regions of the brain, that which you know, become, lights up with halacha, which is very, very detailed oriented, extremely detailed. And it's all about nuances. And it's a very cerebral, cerebral limud. I mean, in halacha itself, there's many ways of learning it. But generally, you're dealing with analysis that is often detached from the emotional life, right? You're learning details in muktza, you're learning details in, in ribis, or details in schitta, or in erevin. You know, it gets very, it's interesting, but it's very technical and nuanced. And then you have the realm of, of spirituality, of transcendence, of intimacy, of vacas, of inspiration, and so forth. But it's fascinating in this mimer, the Balatanya, who I guess uh, was an interesting person because uh, he was a Paisik in Nister, but he was also the same Paisik in Nigla, in Allah, he wrote a Shulchan Aruch. And the Shulchan Aruch, when you read Lukot the Torah and you read Shulchan Aruch, it's always fascinating to think that it was really the same person. The Shulchan Aruch, especially in his Kuntras Achrins, he follows completely that realm of halacha, you know, the realm of Nigla and all of its, its chiris and the kdukim and pulpulim, Shlomo Yosef Zevin, the editor of Talmudis, writes 
in his uh, one of his svarim that in the Kuntras Achron of Shulchan Aruch Harav, he has found the seeds for the brisker mahalach and learning. Interesting. That's what Rav Zevin writes. Rav Zevin was one of the Goyne Adar, the last generation. So he says in the Kuntras Achron of Shulchan Aruch Harav, he found, and he gives many examples, nuggets or, or ideas of what later would be attributed to the brisker derech of Rav Chaim, Rav Chaim Salavetschik and the dynasty of brisk. So with this mimer, it's very interesting. What he says is that in every blad gemara, in every diktuk, really what you're finding is an explosion of love. It's really ahava. And if you're learning a mishnah or a gemara, you're not seeing the tremendous ahava in it, then you're not in touch with it. Because basically, in the beginning of Jewish history, it was easier for the Jewish soul to be on fire towards God. It was easier for the soul not to be um, consumed by physical and material cravings, addictions, appetites. There was a certain spiritual subtlety that vibrated in the cosmos. I think I once shared, there was somebody who was very into this idea of Cook. Rav Ram Yitzhak Cook writes about this a lot, that in Bayis Rishon you see that the Avoid was very rampant, right? In the Soyen of Avoid even the greatest Jews, they put on tefillin, and when it came to kashrus, they wouldn't eat anything but badats of Eid HaChredes. But when it came to Avoid Zara, suddenly everything was, was, was mutter. It was a strange thing that the Gemara even says that the Anshe Knesset Sagdoyla and the Sechta Yuma killed the Yitzhud of Eid Zara. In the beginning of Bayesheni, they murdered the Yitzhud of Eid We don't even understand what the Yitzhud of Eid Zara is. So the Gemara has a whole sugi in Yuma, the Avstamach Tesamet Beis, that the Anshe Knesset Sagdoyla came back to build the second base on Mikdash. And they took the Yitzhahar of it. There's a whole story how they did it, and they obliterated it. They wanted to also kill the Yitzhah Darius, <laughs> the Yitzhahar for promiscuous relations. And what they tried, they locked it up, the Gemara says. And then for three days, they were looking for a fresh egg. They couldn't find a, a fresh egg <laughs> for obvious reasons. And they said, Kalya Alma, you're going to destroy the world. So the Yitzhah of Arias, they colored, they, they weakened it. So the Gemara says it helped at least that people are not into their sisters like they used to be in Bayes Rishon. Their siblings and their mothers. Promiscuity mm-hmm. then was so inc- incest. You have it. You know, it doesn't mean you don't have it. But the same uh, intense mm-hmm. craving for, uh, for incestuous relationships didn't exist afterwards. Other forms of promiscuity. But Avoy the Zorah, they obliterated completely. So what does this mean? It's a, well, you take it over there, you put it in, you put it in a bag, and, and you tie it up, you throw it into the river. That's what it sounds like in the Gemara. The Pshat, of course, is everything in this world is Zelo Umaza. Kedusha and Sitra Acher are, compete with each other. In this bias Rishon, intimacy with God, that was the experience of Judaism. That was the primary experience of Judaism. And that's what Zara Vedah Zara represented. Zara Vedah Zara represented an ability to get on a spiritual high without this discipline, humility, and self-work that Yiddishkeit required. Or in one word, it was a psychedelic experience, just like today. People look for highs through various paths in life that take you there much faster and much easier, despite of what it does to the cells of your brain despite of what it does to your productivity, despite of what it does to your long-term relationships and to your sobriety, but nonetheless, to ease anxiety. We live in a very anxious generation. The anxiety levels are uh, red. Through the, roof. Huh? through the roof, yeah. Through the roof. So people search for different things. In the time of Bayes Rishon, intimacy with God, that was, that was the reality of Judaism. And if the Zara was an I don't know, an elegant, but it was a powerful, powerful competitor, an alternative where you get very deep, they had deep spiritual states of consciousness without paying the price of real spiritual self-work that Judaism requires through humility, through discipline, the path of Torah, the path of mitzvahs, the path of dvekas with Hashem. By Shani, that whole reality was transformed. So usually we teach... Judaism became very institutionalized, extremely institutionalized, to the point that a person could live a very Jewish life, follow all halacha, and not even once really feel intimacy with Hashem. They don't even know that it's really part of it. And in many ways, 
it becomes like a tragedy. It would be like debating, as I said once, debating for years and years recipes without ever tasting the dish. Imagine we substitute the Gemara Lahavdul for cookbooks, okay? And we sit for 17 years with cookbooks and we argue. But if there's no sugar, then you take maple syrup. And if there's no maple syrup, then you take baking powder. Or you squeeze uh, an apple. Or you juice this. And if there's no, and then you could have put in kale. Let's look all alma good. So, and you debate. And then you have mafarshim on the cookbook. And then you have common, and what if you don't have this? Then you do this. But, but what about this? So there's an argument. This one says you could put it into the dish. And this one says it ruins the dish. And then some people know the whole cookbook by heart. From page one through page 999, they know behind, and some even know the commentaries in the back, and all the footnotes with alternatives. There's only one problem, nobody ever tasted anything. It's all talking about recipes, manipulating them, arguing about them, nobody ever tasted it. So it sounds very strange, right? But isn't that what is often the condition of Yiddishkeit? Debates, arguments, diktukim, meticulous, precise nuances, this, that. But if you'll ask somebody, did you taste godliness? Do you, do you, have, do you have intimacy with Hashem? It's even a strange question. It looks like, like, what are you into? You know, where did you end up? You know, what, what have you been taking? Or who have you been seeing? It's even a strange question. So in this mind, we're actually with the Palatanya suggesting is that when the Avas Hashem became much more difficult, the Xeris and Chumris, which is the way God revealed his Torah by his Shani, was him expressing an infinite love in order to arouse and empower the person to be able to reciprocate that love. Because... That's putting a lot of onus on Chazal. Because yes. Because those, those... That it wasn't God's revelation was not direct. It was... Through right, Jesus. through them. Through them. <clears throat> Torah Shabalpa. Well, they were connected to God. So in other words, that the whole kavana here, and that's what he's married, the whole kavana is an infinite, excessive flow and abundance of love, like a, a father who so cares for his child and therefore he wants his body and soul to be completely cleansed from all toxicity. And therefore he would be careful what he eats and what he does and his regimen and his exercise and his schedule more than anybody else. And you'll say, come on, why are you doing all this? It's because I want you to live in an optimal way. I want you to maximize your potentials. I want your operating system to be on the deepest, highest level. I was once invited to speak with a Russian Jew who won, uh, this is the Olympic season. He won a gold medal in the Olympics in Sydney, Australia for swimming. I forget his name. A young Russian Jew. And we both spoke for a community. I spoke as the athlete, and he spoke as the spiritual, uh, as the spiritual guru. <laughs> or at least in my dreams. So before we, for, so we were in the back of the room waiting for the program to start. So I was schmoozing with him, and he's recently won. Uh, recently, I don't remember, it was a few months or a year or two. So I asked him what his schedule is in terms of swimming. So he told me that he wakes up at three o'clock in the morning every day, and he gets into the pool at four in the morning. And he's in the pool for six hours straight swimming. Six hours straight. So he goes from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 o'clock straight. 10 o'clock he finishes his swimming and then he relaxes the rest of the day. I said, how many days during the, how many days a week you do this? He says, seven days a week. He followed the, the Minig Asfar, the you could go to a pool on, on Shabbos. Yeah, the Ashkenazim answered it. It's Simon, but the Sfar the Mormatid it's all. I guess he went that, went according to that shit. So uh, I asked him, seven days a week, six hours straight? He said, yeah. I said, what happens if you take one day off? What happens? He said, there's no such a thing. I said, why? He says, the body knows. And the body will not respond the next day. If I want to remain in the Olympics, I have to operate on that level. If I don't operate on that level, the body immediately knows and it slacks off with you and it will not produce. You, you know, you can't, either we're in it, the body, he tells me, the body says either you're in, we're in or we're out. Don't play games with me. There's no such a thing, one, I said, what if it's five hours? No, no five hours, six hours, 
I said, straight? What if you want to drink in the middle? <laughs> He's looking at me. He says, you know, you're a Brooklyn boy, huh? You don't understand. <laughs> Six hours straight, four to ten. You don't stop. There's no such a thing. No such a thing. <laughs> Tell me once he had a psalavaya, and the family said so he had to take off. So he, he did his swimming later in the day. It was just a very interesting lesson about, you know, on one hand you could say, Nebach, he's a slave, but in his money he wasn't a slave. He was a free man because these are his priorities, and this is what he truly wants in his life. And in order to maximize this potential, this is the regimen and this is the discipline, he's, he, and he knows that these limitations are necessary for him to operate on that level. If you don't want your body to operate on that level, you don't want your body, but if you want to operate on that level, that is the discipline that's required. So when you look at it, he says, I'm giving it as a marshal. All the Xadis and all the Takanas, it was, he says, like a, his marshal was a gem, a, a diamond that you safeguard far more than anything else in the world, not because you don't love it, because you're so sensitive to it and you cherish it so much. So he says, when you're learning all the Xadis and Takanas, he says, look how they're cherishing your soul. They want to distance your mind, your heart, your behavior from every last Nidnut Kal of an Indian of Isur which they understood what Isser meant. They understood the toxicity of Isser, how they're safeguarding you. So essentially every line of Shas is an explosion of Ava. It's an expression of Ava Rava. That's how you have to see it. And in Bayez Shani, it became, it became uh, more necessary. Now this is very, uh, I think, a very beautiful idea because very often in our culture, we don't instinctively associate somebody who's Machmir and Yerushamayim necessarily with love. Sometimes, unfortunately, in many of our instincts, it's the other way around. You know, you talk about somebody who's machmer and, you know, it's more of obsessive type or antisocial. You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, you know, he's very frum. He's not, he's not lovey-dovey, teddy bear, uh, embracer of humanity, a person whose heart is on fire, not judgmental. On the contrary, how could you be so frum if you're not judgmental? You know, the more frum you are, of course you become judgmental. But here you see a very different paradigm that's actually the other way around. That the true, the true Yireh Shemayim who's makbed on a diktor kal of divri soifrim, if he's sensitive to the energy, it only brings out far more love from Hashem towards him and towards the Jewish people, and therefore from him towards Hashem, and therefore by extension from him towards others. So the deeper the chumra, the deeper the takana, it means that you're actually, your love, your love buds are more fine-tuned, not less fine-tuned. I think that's a very uh, powerful uh, observation that we learned from here. Then comes point number two in terms of the father and the daughter, or the husband and the wife. When the halacha tells us the beginning of Parshas Matais, that a father could nullify the vows of his daughter, or a husband could nullify the vows of his wife. We have it technically, halachically, pragmatically, but like the whole message here, there's also a deeper spiritual message. And what was the spiritual message? That a neder is more than a pledge. A neder means, of course, a pledge or an oath. A shvu, there's a neder, there's a shvu. Okay, there's different halachas with neder, shvu, if it's isu cheftze. If it's isu gavra, neder is on the cheftze, shvu is on the gavra. But that's, uh, that's already details in neder, shvu, and then there's a sug of nazir. But the common denominator in all these things is a person makes a promise that they will not do something. They will not go somewhere, they will not eat, or they will do something. You have to keep it. But neder also includes something broader, and that's the concept. And the concept is once you make a neder, you're bound by the neder. You can't do it anymore. So a neder becomes reflective of the ideas that in life a person often feels, consciously or unconsciously, bound. There's certain things I can't. This is who I am, and this is who I am not. And that includes a certain form of paralysis. This is the type of father I am. This is the type of husband I am. This is the type of human being I am. And I remain locked up into that image. This is who I am, like people often say, this is who I am. Sorry, <laughs> you don't like it? This is who I am. And the main person, they tell that to themselves more than anybody else. And this is who I am means I'm afraid of certain things. I don't go there. I'm driven by fear. I'm driven by insecurity. I'm driven 
by a lack of confidence. I'm driven by envy, by animosity, by, by pain, by grief, by anger. Anger is a big one. By anxiety. I'm just Mr. Anxiety. That's it. I will die an anxious man. Even in Olam HaEmes, I'll be anxious, as somebody once told me. In the grave, I'll be anxious. If my anxiety is so deep, even death won't help. He was certain about it. Or I am destined to be miserable. I'm destined to be frustrated. Whatever. Everybody could fill, their, fill out their own, uh, <laughs> their own questionnaire that the dentist gives you. Or the doctor gives you. Right? You could, every, every person. This is really a nether. A nether means it's like a promise. This is who I am. And I'm not changing. You make a promise to yourself. You make an oath. You swear to yourself. Again, consciously or unconsciously. Verbally or in thought. In emotion articulated or emotion less articulated but it's an oath an oath is this is who i am this is a promise i will not change i will not alter and seldom do we come and revisit that seldom do we come the words that he uses is that every nefesh has isurim vikishurim knots you're literally tied so if i'm tied to a particular wall that's where i remain i remain stuck to this place i can move around but only in this confinement. And every person has knots that tie them to certain situations, and I can't get out of it. In other words, as much as my horizons expand, and as much as I meet new people, and as much as I encounter new experiences, I ultimately remain trapped in solitary confinement. Literally, as he says, in a prison cell. What's a pr you could walk around in a prison cell. You may even have a view, and you may even take a walk. But there is a confinement you don't get out of. And that's the story of a person's life. Not that we're chas v'shalom literally in a prison cell, but ecologically I may travel the world, but I don't get out of my orbit because this is who I am. I am the person who lacks empathy. I am the person who has an addiction to food. I am the person who's a glutton. I am the person who's angry. I am the person who doesn't know X, Y, Z. That's who I am. And therefore all of my experiences are uh, channeled and harnessed through that sense of identity. That's what a nether means. And he says, how does one break out of this? Ein chavush matir The prisoner can't get out of prison. You can't. Not because you don't want to. Not because even you don't know that you need to. You may know you're in prison, which is a level. Some people don't know. You may know. You may want to get out. You may even know on some level or not, but you may even know what it could look like on the other side, or at least that it doesn't look like what it looks like now. So a person may have a lot of knowledge. First of all, they know they're in prison, and it's not good. Second of all, they may even want to get out. The problem is not wanting or knowing. The problem is ability. Ein chavush matirazma. And here, probably one of the most amazing insights the Balatanya says there's only one way to help a person get out. And the Lashen lush is, Midas Ahavarabba, Pchinis Avia. The father and a daughter, the father's relationship to a daughter is considered one of the, one of, one of the deepest relationships in the world. The Gemara also says, There's a unique relationship between father and daughter. The word Av also is associated with the word Ava desire, ava. The definition of the father is, especially towards the daughter, is one, a very deep love and very deep relationship. And I guess there's something with the daughter more than a son. Because from a son, the father has certain expectations. You have to be my Yiddish. Du bist mein Kaddish. The moment somebody is your Kaddish, you're already not, uh, it's already a different thing. Your son got to, you know, son got to carry on the business, the family. <laughs> but the daughter, there's something unique about the daughter. There's something unique about the daughter because that natural pressure that exists from father to son, you know, that your son has to uh, do everything that you wanted to do and you couldn't and your son has to do it. You were supposed to be the Bucky Bashas, but you didn't. So now your son has to become the Bucky Bashas. So he'll make sure that his son has to become the Bucky Bashas. So he can make sure that his son, with the daughter, this doesn't exist. I'm just being mayor, but there is something even, with, this is true also with a son, but with a daughter, there's something special. So what the Torah is saying is that who could be mevatel, the neder of the daughter? Who can help a person liberate themselves, extricate themselves from the knots of life? 
Midas Aviya, Pchinnis Ahavarab. The abundance love, abundance of love, that you love this child, you love this person, this is the only way you can help them get out. And the reason this is the only way you can help them get out, because it's not that they're not getting out of prison because they don't know they're in prison. They know. Nor is it because they don't want to. They want to. But they're broken. They're locked up. They're in chains. So you come to this person in prison and you say, how do you live such a stupid life? You're in prison. You're locked up. You're confined. Right? It's like coming and somebody screaming at somebody, when are you going to stop being insecure? Come on, get secure. Come on, come on. You take them, you shake them up, put them in a washing machine. Twirl them. Okay, maybe it'll help. I don't know. Maybe a washing machine actually can help for some people if it goes very fast. The, the person knows he's there. Or, no, or she knows she's there. They know. You say, come on, do you like this life? Live another life. Who, who likes this life? What a stupid life you're living. They know that it's stupid much more than you'll ever know. You think you feel the pain. They don't feel the pain. They feel it much more. The problem is, some people would call it in today's language, have trauma. Well, they're broken. They're fragmented. They're shattered. They have a terrible self-image. Or they don't even know themselves. So you could scream from today till tomorrow, Ein chavush matir asma. What's the etza? One etza. And that is, you need to, so you, it's not just simple love. You know, it's a key word, love, 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 love. It's much deeper. The Eitzah is to make a person cognizant that they are more powerful than their traumas. They are more powerful than their insecurities. You are more powerful than your chains. You have chains. You have pain. You have grievance. You have frustration. You have anger, whatever, you have anxiety. But you are more powerful than your anxiety. You are not defined by it. You can define it. You are more powerful. How do you give a person that feeling? For this, they have to first and foremost feel their infinite value. When I love this person, and they ask themselves consciously or unconsciously, why is this person loving a shmata like me? There's nothing to love here. I'm a wasted I'm wasted goods. I'm damaged goods. What's there to love? What are you loving? Wow. What they're feeling through osmosis or verbally or not verbally, what they're experiencing is the chashivus, the indispensable, non-negotiable dignity and unwavering value and power of their soul, of their identity. What it allows them to experience is that they are more powerful than all their shackles. And that's how they can get out of the nether. When Avia, when the love hears the nether, Haini Avia Isa, Haini Avia Isa, he dissuades her, he removes the power of the nether. Why? Simply being in the presence of Avia. The ability of that, it's a muscle, it's a metaphor. That level of Ava Rabba is so powerful that what it does for the daughter, what it does for the person who's locked up, it gives them the empowerment and the knowledge of appreciating who they are because of this love, and then automatically they could break out of their shackles. Why can they break out? They want to go out, and they know they have to go out. But now they suddenly discover their largeness, their greatness, the awesome quality of their life that they didn't have. Now people often that can't identify this. They associate this idea with enabling. You are an enabler. Tell the person what to do. Tell them to stop behaving like a moron. Tell them to stop behaving like an idiot. Now, sometimes you can do that when the person is just behaving like an idiot. <laughs> but you have to be able to identify that's not a nether. A nether means you're bound, you're locked, you're in prison. Now I could tell you, stop behaving like an idiot. You're in prison. Thank you, I know. I'm suffering more than you know. Get out. Thank you, I can't. They can't even say I can't. Right, because they're in prison even to say I can't. If they would say I can't, that would be half the issue. They can't say I can, they just can't. Come on, who wants to live such a life? Get your life together. Learn from your older brother. That's the best always. Look how successful he is. Learn from your sister. Learn from your father. You think I always had an easy life? You ever got that lecture? You think I always had an easy life? I worked my way through college. <laughs> For 11 years, I didn't have a penny to my name. Get your life together, you spoiled, rotten brat. 
Now, this person thinks he's speaking truth, and maybe he is speaking truth from his perspective, but he's completely not sensitive to the experience of the person. Completely not. Person knows they're in prison, they want to get out of prison. They're broken, especially a person who's been abused. And their nether is beyond anybody, what anybody can imagine. Somebody who's been abused, what happens to them is they are so locked up because the pain of what they experience causes them to have a self-image that puts them literally in a mental prison from which many people can't get out. And there's one Eitzah. The Eitzah is the Midas Averab to build up the soul and make the soul feel that as powerful as all of the toxicity and negativity, you have that, but you're still more powerful. And because you're more powerful than it, therefore, you can ultimately choose your path in life. He can let himself. Yeah, the 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 yeah. Oh, it's you're not letting him. You're not letting him. Yes, yes. You let him go. You're giving him the power. Yeah, yeah. 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 The first thing we say in the morning by my Dani is here, Rabbi Muna Secha. That's the ultimate Ava, unless we start the day with that. He believes in us. Well, the kind of Shamash in the side of the Tahiti. He thinks that he's a, he's a prisoner to his own belief. Not to any reality. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we'll connect. Yeah. Late in the afternoon, five o'clock. I'm sure I just have to see the hell. Yeah, five or about later. Later, but I'm going to have to do it. Good enough. I'm going to hold on my door on the chill. She knows who I am. I'm going to have a friend. That's the biggest change. The biggest thing. The biggest thing. The biggest thing. Is there a way where it's probably too I mean, I'm so grateful to have this year to, to divide it by the topic? It actually gets divided by topic, and then it gets put out to the website. Ah, it does get divided by the topic. Yeah, so okay. in three days, it'll be up there on the computer. Right. Okay. Can you just go to the town and hear? I'm very sad. I'm not sure what's happening. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net 
donate.